and welcome to Games Master, where once again the girls have given me crabs. Can we ever have anything else to eat? We're asking you to munch on our TV pie. This is what's in today's show. Children's presenters Carol Varley and Sarah Vandenberg untangle their undergrowth in armadillo racing. But we begin with an event called I'll Move That Gear Stick Manually, if you don't mind. <laughs> I was a boy, my interest lay firmly in the acquisition of other people's tonkers. Sadly, time changed, and a new generation has emerged who are obsessed with nothing else but their lap times on the latest console racing game. To reflect this troubling change in the social climate, I've challenged three of the country's champion game players to tie their hands at Grand Tourismo on the PlayStation. In order to secure their place in racing mythology, my contestants must negotiate the deep forest river to go. A course filled to bursting with devilishly tight corners. Anyone expecting a pleasant ride in the country should he leave now. Okay, top notch calibre of contestants for this one. We have got the top three as finished in the Blockbuster National Games Play Championships this year. Please welcome Ian Marshall, John Paul Roberts, and Aaron Noel. <laughs> Thank all you. right, Aaron. Yeah. OK, uh, let's start with you first of all. Ian, are you courting? And what's the lovely lady's name? Shirley. And how did you meet her? In a nightclub. Ah. Yeah. How, how do, because obviously I'm a bit older than everyone there, how does a young man dance in a nightclub then to attract the women these days? Do you want me to show you? I, would, I wouldn't mind. No, I'm not going to. Joe Paul, your mind's on loftier subjects. Philosophy. You're into. A what, bit, yeah. What is the meaning of life? To be happy, I suppose. Oh, that's good. I always thought it was something to do with pants. No, no, afraid not. Uh, finally, Aaron. Uh, now, uh, as people will know throughout the series, I do have a fascination with people who fancy their friends' mums. Any of your mums tickle your fancy? I mate, Jimmy's. What is, what is Jimmy's mum got that none of the other mums have? Um, a good personality. And that's more important to you than yeah. looks and everything like that. Of course it is, you're a 90s man. Whereas myself, I'm totally unreconstructed. So, while the nation is deafened uh, by the sounds of many hands on Jimmy's mum's knocker, we're going to take a look at today's news. Spice World is luring in punters nationwide, but those people who make their way to the Empire Leicester Square are getting the bonus of a free CD-ROM. Featuring puzzles and trivia questions, the CD-ROM punishes your progress with clips from the movie. With the PlayStation game still in development, the CD-ROM's the only solace on offer for Spice Mad computer owners, mad being the right word. I see ya, hold Nice day for a ride to hell. This spring, it sees a touch of comedy reaching the world of motion theatre rides in the form of Mad Racers, where surreal cartoon characters race their way through a series of life-endangering landscapes to a soothing death metal soundtrack. It's also won an award recently for being the best kind of this thing in the world or something. People who like to juggle while playing Quake, rejoice! Because US company Biocontroller come up with a hands-free controller system for the PC. The system's sensors can be safely strapped onto various parts of the body, allowing the players complete control of games using only their eyes, head and fingers. Mind you, you will look like a git. OK, we've got a great challenge today. We've got the top three as finished in the Blockbuster National Games Playing Championships. They're going to compete on the Gran Turismo on the PlayStation. Whoever gets the fastest lap in the Deep Forest level will win. Rick Henderson, Hello. what kind of car are they driving? Well, they're actually driving the Griffiths 500 Blackpool B340. Unbelievably. What, what kind of car is that? It's a TVR. It's the fastest car, actually, in this game. Right. Yeah. OK. I've never heard of it. Um, what, what kind of time will you be looking for them? What's a good time? Well, we're actually looking for around under 1.30, 1 minutes 30. If they get a 1.20, I think they've won. Uh, OK, then, best of luck to uh, all the guys. We're going to start off with Job Paul, because he finished third in the uh, Blockbuster Championship. Best of luck, Job Paul. Off you go. OK, on your screen in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see the rev counter, the speedometer will be underneath that. And kilometers per hour, the metric system, you can see Job Paul's car is the white one. You don't really have to worry about what position he's in or what other cars he passes. It's all to do with the time, which you can see in the top left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, we'll be coming to checkpoint soon, first of all, but Rick, 
but the basic aim is to hit the middle of the road. Well, yeah, basically now that he's got past the other cars, he's not going to have any hamper in progress going on. But the other big problem he's got is so far he's been choosing the wrong gears, I think. He also had a little Scully in third, but you can see that in the bottom right-hand corner. Now down to second. The first checkpoint, sorry, 30 seconds. 30 seconds for John Paul at the first checkpoint. That's not immensely great, and going up on the bank there was certainly the wrong move for him. OK, and he's just doing a bit gentle left-hander here. He's into the third gear. Would you like to see him in a, what, in a, a kind of higher gear still something? He should be getting up to fourth or fifth. Certainly on the straights, he seems to be going around the whole valley track in third gear. OK, a little nudge at the rock there. Not something I would imagine you'd want to do unless you were showing off to a lady. Uh, here we come to the second checkpoint. No, no, no. no sorry, sorry, it's the... Um, I was getting a little bit premature there, right? Never mind. OK, uh, we've still got three. We've got just over a minute. Now we're quite a tight left under here comes the second checkpoint now. One, one minute two. eight. There. Uh, that's not bad, Rick, is it? Or? That's not bad, actually. Um, he's doing better than he did in practice at this present moment, but he's had a few skinny moments around corners. He's off oh. again, Rick. That is absolutely dreadful. He went straight into the fence. That will slow him down by about two or three seconds. OK, but that's it. He's finished the lap. One minute, 26.254 for John Paul Roberts. John Paul, please make way for Ian Marshall. Ian, uh, best of luck, 126.254 to beat. Off you go. OK, Ian's had a bit of a paint job here. It's now turned to a limp yellow, his car. We're getting the countdown. And uh, off he goes. Now, that seemed a bit of a squeaky start there, was it? A very slow start. Unfortunately, he pressed the acceleration button slightly before the green light came on, which actually slowed him down. Too much revs at the start, but OK, he's at the first left hander. He's up on the bank a little bit. That's going to slow him down, Rick. Yeah, it certainly will slow him down. He doesn't want to make many mistakes at the beginning of the track. The beginning of the track is a lot easier than further on in it. OK, so we've got a gentle chicane. He's coming up to hit the left hand up the side of it, into the right hand side of it. It's a further twist on the left. He's doing that bad. He's staying on the road. We're going to be coming up to the first checkpoint quite soon. Here we go. 31 seconds. Joe Paul was, did it in 30. He's one second off the pace rate. Yeah, he's one second off the pace. You can see why he's weaving and bobbing around the road. He should just be going straight. Of course, straight as lane, but he's trying to travel. As anyone who's been a cop straight will know. OK, he's in the left hand here now. Speed wise, 150. It's not bad. He's going for the third gear all the time as well. He's going for the third gear all the time as well, Rick. Yeah, he's going on fourth gear for this straight here, and, and John Paul didn't do that. And he's now going through trying to can stay in fourth gear. But he needs to keep on the line. Of course, when you go around the corner, you get the best line, the faster you'll go. Oh, he oh, went for that bit too fast. Here comes the second checkpoint, no. One or oh, six. He's now two seconds ahead of John Paul. That is actually incredible. I think it's because John Paul had crashed into a wall back there, further back. So Ian Marshall, a couple of seconds in the lead. The final time we're looking for 126. Two by four, he's skidded off there, though. He may have lost a second or two there, Rick. Yeah, he hit into the fence here. He does finish the line. 23.956, Ian Marshall takes the lead. Ian, make way for Aaron. Aaron Knoll, the person who came first in the national championships, theoretically the best games player in Britain. Trying to be a time of 123.956. Best of luck, Aaron. Off you go. Aaron is up to for red, a colour that signifies danger and passion. <laughs> <laughs> and off he goes to start again. That's another scuffling start there. A scary start, not quite as bad as Ian's though, because as you can see, he's gone past the cars very quickly indeed. OK, then, um, he's getting his uh, speed up quite well. He's in this first tight left hander. The brake lights are coming on. He's not using the handbrake turn. This is another option that's in the game, which could certainly get around the corners quicker. 20 seconds gone there. We're looking for a time of under 31 at the first checkpoint. Sit break. There, if he uses the handbrake, of course, he might not have skidded straight into... Oh, that oh, was Oh, no, that's going to slow him down as he comes to the first checkpoint. One, 32 seconds at the first checkpoint. He's a second off of Ian Marshall's record-setting pace. That is really quite bad indeed. Um, it, it's in fact it's two seconds off of um, John Paul's pace, which is really bad indeed. But Ian managed to make the time up. And he's not even he's not even going for the racing line though. Ian managed to find the racing lines. Of course, if you go in shallow on a corner, you'll come out far, far faster. Okay, he's bobbing all over the place. This does not look good. There's lots of work to be done by Aaron Noel. He's through the tunnel there. He's got a car in front of him. That is not going to help him much at all, Rick. I think we're going to just the way come to the second checkpoint. Yes, there it is. Let's look at the time. One to ten. Oh, he's now four seconds behind Ian Marshall's time. He's going to have to set a blistering final third. I don't know how he's going to do this now. It seems way, way beyond him. He's got even tougher turns to go around. He's gone back onto the grass and knoll. Uh, there was a bloke, you know, with a gun there. And, it was uh, a proper spot. <laughs> and that's it. Here we go with the finish line. One at 27.797. That means Ian Marshall is the winner.
OK, uh, Aaron, let's start with you there. Uh, I mean, the second half of the race especially, it didn't quite go to plan. What, what went wrong? Um, can't really say. It's not my day today, so... Too busy thinking about Jimmy's mum, I think, possibly. <laughs> uh, John Paul, uh, a good performance. You were actually the fastest over, over that first part of the course. Again, it was the, the second half that went wrong with you, wasn't it? Just a couple of knocks, really, yeah. Yeah, well, I've got to be philosophical about it. Uh, I like that one. Uh, and uh, Ian, finally, well, look, I was there at the national championships and I saw Aaron edging you out in the final. You got revenge today, though? Yeah, my dad. So uh, you can dance a little celebratory jig? Yeah, I will do. As well. And I that will. way I've neatly, what I've done, kids, if you're watching, I've neatly brought in what I spoke to them at the beginning at the end as well. A little tip for future television presenters there. And uh, that means, though, at the end of that, that the uh, go to Gears Master Joyce, it goes to Ian Marshall. <laughs> Right, is the PlayStation better than the N64? Is Virtua Fighter 3 better than Tekken 3? Is a plank of wood more conversationally adept than Danny Bear? Some of those questions might be answered in today's reviews. <laughs> While the rest of us are gently caressing Lara Croft to greater heights, there's always going to be somebody who prefers wandering around manor houses in a frilly shirt. If you're one of these people, Nightmare Creatures is up your alley. Now, the word goth normally has people running for the hills screaming, but this is actually rather good. A deeply engrossing and really rather scary little adventure game. A Victorian gothic horror. What more could you ask for on PlayStation? It's incredibly playable and it's basically a cross between Tomb Raider and Resident Evil. Now, the obvious comparison straight away with Nightmare Creatures is going to be Tomb Raider. Now, there are some big differences between the two. Tomb Raider is more platforming. This is more adventure-based. Tomb Raider is more puzzle-based. Nightmare Creatures is more combat-based. The combat system itself is quite simplistic, but it's very easy to play, and I actually find it quite satisfying. The game moves pretty fast. I mean, there's a serious pace to it. Lots of box smashing, creature annihilating, mayhem all around. Nightmare Creatures does itself a lot of favours by having a huge playing area coupled with a very good learning curve. You'll get into it easily and want to play again and again. Bloody Roar! Hooray! It's got a swear word in the title. It features animals chewing each other's legs off. It is Bloody Roar on the PlayStation. It seems to be very popular with beat em ups at the moment to have a power bar. And in most games, you reach a certain level on the power bar and you're suddenly able to pull off wicked combos or special moves or whatever. In this instance, your power bar builds up and what you're able to do is turn into another creature. It makes you wonder where the beat em up can go next. This is a very outlandish addition to the genre, but still, I'd prefer to see this than yet another Street Fighter clone. It could have probably done with more moves here and there thrown in and a bit of a tighter control mechanism. But nevertheless, this is still a Class A prime example of a decent beat-em-up. Now, I'll tell you what, we look after the celebrities on this show. We cater for their every eccentricity with our lavish entertainment budget, sometimes allowing them two sugars in their cup of tea. We also allow them to savage their own credibility in our celebrity challenge. Today's celebrity challenge is on one of the most obscure arcade games I've ever encountered, Armadillo Racing. Taking the part of a small South American mammal, contestants must race to the finishing line whilst avoiding the many obstacles that pepper their path. Armadillos are controlled by furiously rolling the platform and getting up a good speed will allow the little critters to curl themselves into a ball and bounce opposition out of the way. My two contestants will play as the red and blue armadillos in the best of three lap contests. It's a weird one, but I think it should be fun. Now, in olden days, if you were a children's television presenter, you didn't have to be particularly attractive, as John Noakes successfully demonstrated. Nowadays, though, it's a different kettle of particularly attractive fish, as tonight's celebrity guests will prove. Please welcome, from ITV Scratchy & Co, Carilla Varley, and from the BBC's Speedy Booked, 
Sarah Vandenborg. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Carol. Uh, Welcome back, Sarah. Yeah. Mm. Now, uh, for research purposes on the show, we often get celebrities' agents to send us details about them. They're often hysterical, uh, such as these two. Now, Carol, you have a deep, dark, secret double life. Because you are, and it says here, not all over Europe as dance music sensation Ginny. Ugh, I hate that, I hate that. Can't you just scrub that out there? But it's true, yeah. I used to be a singer called Ginny uh -huh. and a hit called Keep Warm. But it was keep years warm. and years ago. What was, what was the kind of chorus of that then? You must know. Keep, keep, keep warm. Keep, keep warm. It was, it was oh, a big keep, hit. Keep, keep you warm. The yeah. Star Wars song. I remember, I remember <laughs> that one. That was good. And also, and the, fin the final one, and this is great, um, <laughs> Carol's thoroughly contemporary looks. Yeah. What's, con what's contemporary looks? This. As a force, what's like an, what's an old fashioned look then? Is that an old fashioned look then? Uh, Sarah, yours is even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we we still remember you from your days as Lauren Carpenter in mm. Neighbours. Now you appeared on lots of different Australian television shows as a result, including Hey Hey It's Saturday. Yeah. What was that like? What was that it show? It rivals Noel's House Party. Oh, it's like that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Ah, okay. Mm. So it's a quality show. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, well, we ruminate more about uh, television what, legends Ooh. and uh, prepare to play possibly the most fantastic game in the history of Games Master. You guys can take a quick commercial break. <laughs> Welcome back. We've got a clash of the uh, Children's Pivot Titans here. the ITV taking on the BBC. Carilla Valley against Sarah Vandenborg at the most bizarre video game you will ever see in the history of Games Master. We're talking about bizarre things, let me introduce mother's favourite, Derek Lynch, in the cold commentary box. Derek, fantastic as always to see you. Do you Thank have you. any tips for these two ladies? Yes, with this, with this game, I want to try and keep a nice rhythm. Two-handed technique. <laughs> yes? <laughs> keep a nice rhythm. Keep you are talking pace. about the game here, Derek. Yes, of course, of course. Okay. Of course. And then uh, you'll see that Armadillo turn into a ball and they really start moving. Okay, and uh, do you, uh, which of the two girls would you think would be the favourite? Oh, <laughs> put me on the spot here. Uh, Sarah. Do you fancy Sarah? <laughs> Derek fancy Sarah. No, no. Okay, uh, right, best of luck, girls. Uh, we are giving, we're going to have three races. It's uh, currently a best of three situation. Best of luck. Three, two, one, off you go. Okay, Kirill Valley's in the red, Sarah Vandenberg's in the blue. We're going to start off on Kirill's screen here, then flick from one to the other. There's the countdown. And they're off, and it's Kirill screaming into the lead. Sarah coming up with the rear, and she flips her over to it. They're both walling like you said they were. That's right, they watch out for one of these mud patches. The mud patches slow you down. Okay, then they're still flick on the screen. Oh. screen now. She's a bit behind, she's just falling in the wall. She's, she's falling to the lead. Up that little mind there, and that means that Kirill is very far ahead at this point. You can see in the distance on Sarah's screen, she's turned the corner now. Let's go back to... Carrill in the red, Sarah in the blue, we'll start off again with Carrill, you can see the little, little legs going like the clappers there. And they're off once again, it's Carrill taking the early lead, Derek. No, Sarah, no, Sarah, oh, Sarah, take, Sarah taking it, Sarah's taking it, the blue. Oh, she's caught in the mud, oh, she's, she's getting around the mud, coming quite well. Straight onto the little uh, kennel bridge, canal bridge. Oh, she's falling into the water there. Come on. She's in Carrill, Barney could now take the lead, let's go back to Carrill soon, we can see she's well ahead. That's Sarah, right, Derek. and Carrill's dodging the, the, dodging the little rocks in the road, and there's a ramp, can Sarah catch up with us? Oh, hi, Jack. Let's go over Sarah. That's a cool oh, one. There she's coming right up. She's got right Carol's bottom and now they're into the pigs. Pig. That's right. They're going to dodge the pigs. Through the pigs. And onto the bank now. Oh, Sarah's oh. falling off the bank. That'll be sick. Carol's got to take the score. she's staying Quimmy. off the bank. Sarah's oh, swimming. No, Come on, Sarah. Swimming. Sarah's swimming. Sarah's going to leave again, Derek. That's right. And Sarah's dodging the stones. Going around his bank. Watch out for the bridge. Don't fall off the bridge. Oh, oh the bridge. Sarah's off the bridge. That's so cool. Carol is a 
Karel, you, you with your contemporary looks and your husky voice and your very professional manner. Um, it didn't, wasn't quite enough for you today, was it? No, she, she nipped me at the post. I can't believe it. She just whizzed past me. She rolled past me. I couldn't yeah. get a roll going. You, you actually you kind of did a big jump, didn't you, Sarah, at yeah. the end there and just landed right, right on her, yeah. on her behind. Yeah, not fair. Not no. fair. It is fair, though, because the last time I came on, I lost. That's right, when you were years Three hard years, years, years now. Three hard years working together. I've got to wait three years to come back on the Before show. you come back on again. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you both very much for coming on. Uh, this particular leg has been won up by the BBC because the Games Master Golden Joyce Nick goes to Sarah Vandenberg. <laughs> As we await the introduction of a new Olympic event entitled the Armadillo Racing with Contemporary Looks, let's sneak into this week's feature. While the rest of us have been enjoying Crimbo, we Japanese brokes have been locked in their bedrooms creating the latest arcade games. Winter Heat is the first of these. It's actually the sequel to Athlete Kings, which you may have seen on the show last series. The game features eight events, including downhill skiing, cross-country, speed skating, bobsleigh and a ski jump. And you can expect another perfect Saturn conversion very soon. For those that find public displays of Lycra distasteful, Salvation comes in the form of Downhill Bikers, the sequel, of course, to Uphill Gardeners. Somebody's obviously decided that motorbikes are for wusses and produced a new racing game that, like Prop Cycle before it, relies on pedal power alone to get you to the next checkpoint. Current test machines feature a twin-screen link-up mode so you and a friend can compete head-to-head, -head, admire the scenery and leave nasty tire tracks over nature reserves, national parks and sites of historic interest while getting piles. The local arcade, however, would be a hollow place indeed if it wasn't for the occasional game that featured nothing else but blokes kicking each other in the nadgers. Hooray then for Air Guides, a new beat-em-up that's the result of a collaboration between Namco and the creators of Final Fantasy VII, Squaresoft. The game cunningly features all the best bits nicked from the most successful beat-em-ups, which means players can use weapons, interact with the environment and turn into animals. Given most people's naturally violent tendencies, we're expecting Air Guides to do the business in arcades this spring until the nights get lighter and you can go and meet women. Seven Games Masters done and dusted, only three more till we bite the big one. Three weeks until TV Land becomes less funny than Shane Ritchie telling one of Joe Brand's jokes to a funeral party. Good night. Surprise! <laughs>